Hi all, my name is Ostari Tsang. Welcome to EIA Business School Training. Today we will cover, uh, cover Latin and CVs. Uh, before starting with the training, uh, I will to remind you something really important from uh, your speaking, uh, because um, it's really important to understand that before starting to make the cover letter of the CV, you should know something about your market. So you have to investigate your market speaking about the target companies, companies on the market, what kind of profiles are they looking for, for example, speaking about nice to have, must have, etc. And then also it's really important to make your own sword. I know sometimes it's really difficult to make the own sword, but anyway, you have to do it. And you have to do it perfect because this is the first step on your professional career or the first step to start with the uh, job and cover letter and CVs, etc. If you have doubts to make the SWOT, please don't hesitate to contact us in order to help you because this SWOT should be perfect, okay? Then, uh, speaking about the cover letter. At the end, the cover letter is something simple. It's a letter. Trying to uh, make a presentation about your profile, but not only your profile. I will speak about profile, uh, the interest that you have in the company, of the role, etc., etc., etc. To avoid any possible problems or main mistakes, I will tell you that first of all, don't use templates. For sure, you will sure uh, you will have a structure of the cover letter but try to make something different for every single job. Uh, in that sense, try uh, to make a cover letter without pre-written sentence. The format of your cover letter should also match with the company, with the job position, the industry you are applying, etc. Uh, the intention is to make a unique cover letter for every job you apply to. Now, what to include in your cover letter? How a candidate's work experience meets job requirements? How a candidate's skills meet job requirements? Why a candidate wants to work at the organization? And also your cover letter needs to provide this information and leave the reader convinced that you are the right person for the job. And again, as I told you, to prepare the cover letter, it's better if you investigate the market, investigate the company, and make your own sword, for example. Uh, if you are a speak, uh, Portuguese speaker, and the company is from Portugal or from Brazil, it will be great if you can reflect that kind of things on the cover letter. But then, you cannot use the same cover letter for another company from the United Kingdom because that no sense. It seems simple, but anyway, the cover letter has a structure. First of all, you have to say, dear, see our madam, or dear, whatever, and avoid, please, who may concern, because it's something at the end, um, impersonal, I will say, so it's better if you know the name of the person. Then, it's important to say from the very beginning the interest you have or the knowledge on the company project position. For example, uh, I'm very interested in the new area because I know that this is a new area that you are created, for example, innovation area, something like this. And then you have to tell something about your experience related with this position. For example, I believe that my profile and experience can be uh, of a great help for you, for your company. Uh, I was working in the business development program and open new markets. And I will say open new markets because it's a new area, so I'm still focused on new areas, new markets, etc. And I have an MBA in business, etc. So in that simple sentence, sentence, you will say the interest you have, the knowledge you have, also a little bit about your experience, 
and the master or university degree. Again, you are telling the background that you have and showing that your profile fits perfect with this uh, job description. Your background is perfect with it because this job description. It's really important if you can do it, tell something about the reference. For example, I can provide reference of the clients with whom I have a worker, or I can uh, give you reference about my previous manager, or whatever. But sometimes it's better to tell the reference that you have instead of say, I will tell you the reference on the future if you need my reference. No. So put on the table the reference because it's really important for the people and for the companies. For sure, we have to, I will say, close this letter. But before saying goodbye, <laughs> regards, you have to uh, try to close a meeting with the human resources manager or the hiring manager. And you can use a sentence uh, inviting to have a call or a meeting. Something like, if you think that my profile can be interested for your company, and you want to, more, uh, to know more about my experience, my backgrounds, my studies, please don't hesitate to tell me when we can have a meeting or a call. It's just only to close the cover letter and also to close the intention of the cover letter because the intention of the cover letter at the end is has a meeting or to have a call. Then for sure, thanks. Thanks in advance for all the interest, regards, and then your name. Oh, sometimes we uh, write the cover letter but uh, we say regards, but we don't uh, say our name, or maybe we didn't put on the top of the cover letter our personal details, speaking about the telephone number, the mail, and kind of things. So at the end, if this cover letter is separate with the CV, they don't have the opportunity to contact you because you didn't tell them your telephone number, your name, that kind of thing. So take care about the details because the cover letter is the first impression that they will have about your profile. Um, to be honest, we have a lot of uh, websites to prepare a cover letter. The structure is clear, I will repeat anyway, but the structure is really clear, but the, which is really, really important is that your cover letter is personal, is your and should be different. So the structure is, they are whatever, the interest on the position, on the company, the knowledge that you have, the background experience of the same position, the master that you have, reference, invitation to have a call or a meeting, thanks, and sign. It's simple, but you have to take care with this cover letter in every single detail, okay? Okay, uh, we will start with the CV. Uh, for sure you have your CV. For sure your CV is perfect, but maybe you didn't realize about some small details that the recruiters, uh, they will take uh, in account and seriously account. Before starting, take a look on your mail address. So take care, your mail address should also uh, should be professional, I mean. In my case, for example, should can be Ustaritz B, whatever, uh, Yahoo the test, but avoid uh, no professional email address. Like, for example, I will say something like, um, I love salsa, 96, arroba, Yahoo .es. So avoid that kind of email address. If you have that kind of email address, just only open a new account to start with the recruitment process or with a job or whatever, okay? Also, take care with the WhatsApp. Take care with the photo and the welcome sentence. So just only review the WhatsApp that you have, the photo that you have there, and try also to think about something professional. 
uh, also can be funny, but professional. Okay? So don't miss a thing like, for example, family, kids, on the same photo on the WhatsApp, because at the end, and they are they, uh, the recruiters, we have all the information on the website, on Google, on WhatsApp, or whatever. So if I want to know something more about you, apart of the CV, I'm able to do it because you are showing me that kind of small details important also. If you have an Skype address, again, take care with the photo and the, I will say, the, the address of the Skype. Professional. And if it's possible, try to do always in the same sentence. I will say the email address, the Skype address, the WhatsApp, etc., etc., etc. And for sure, check Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube. Because uh, the recruiters can go directly to your Facebook or Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, etc. And they uh, have the option to take more information about your profile, more than you are expecting. So take care with that kind of small details, again, really important. Now we have the email address, the WhatsApp, the Skype. I have my Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, etc., etc., et cetera, et cetera, professional also. So now I can try to make my CV. If you have time, <laughs> verify, please your email address and WhatsApp, because it's really important. Uh, day a day, the CB, as a CB, as a sheet of paper, uh, I will say it's disappearing. I mean, we are going to change the CB for the profile. The profile is more than a CB. The profile is more linked with your personal brand, is more LinkedIn with LinkedIn also, or with Viadeo, or with Sing, or with Wija, GitHub, or whatever. So at the end, we are speaking about the profile. The CV is a sheet of paper, but the profile should be the cover letter, that sheet of paper called CV. If you are in GitHub, the things that you are uh, putting on GitHub to show that uh, what kind of things are you looking for, or what kind of things are you making, or whatever. LinkedIn is really important also because at the end the CV and the LinkedIn profile should, should match. Uh, speaking about the photo also professional, speaking about um, the key summary, on the CV you will have also the briefing summary and in LinkedIn is the same, we have the briefing summary. So please make more or less the same or with the same sense. It's a mistake if you can say, for example, in your CV, I'm a managing director, and in LinkedIn is uh, something like, I'm a general manager, I'm a country manager, I'm a financial controller. So it would be a line. The recommendations in LinkedIn. Before trying a product or a hotel or restaurant, for sure, for sure you are checking the recommendation. I mean in TripAdvisor, in Booking, or whatever. So why are you making that kind of testing? Why are you looking for the recommendation? Because if someone is uh, yeah, making the recommendation about this restaurant, you will go, if it's a good recommendation, uh, you will not go if it's not a good recommendation. So at the end, the recommendation in LinkedIn are really important. I would say we don't need 20 recommendations on, the, on LinkedIn, just only four or five, but really, really good. If the person who made the recommendation uh, made the recommendation but not really professional, I would say more than a personal recommendation that like he or she is my friend, I really appreciate him because he's a really nice girl or whatever, it's really nice, but at the end it's not professional. It's better to have a recommendation about your professional career or your professional activity or the um, achievement that you, you have, something professional again. If you are going to um, share comments, or share links or whatever, 
you have to try to engage your audience. Um, this kind of um, content should match with your professional experience or your professional career or your sector. I mean, for example, if you are a financial manager, it's better if you can't comment something related with the financial uh, staffs or with eBay 35 or with um, newspaper related with the financial things or whatever, instead of uh, post a content related with um, the new Amazon product, which is really important also, but it's not linked with your professional career. And why? Because uh, the recruiter are using LinkedIn not only to see the professional experience, the CV, they are trying to know your profile. For example, if you are telling that you are a financial uh, manager, focus on financial, and then all of your content are related with retail or with sports or whatever, so maybe you are not so focused on financial that you set on the briefing summary or what you set on the summary. Take care about uh, these small details also in LinkedIn because real, re, they are really, really important. And LinkedIn is more than a CV. Don't forget this is a profile, your profile. And also take care with the personal brand, your personal brand. As I told you, uh, I would say the information that you have on your CV or LinkedIn or in another website where you have uploaded your CV should be the same. No mistakes, no gaps between info jobs, LinkedIn, or your CV. Because uh, the recruiters will think something about, okay, maybe it's not so oriented to the details because these three CVs or three profiles are a mess and it's the same person, but doesn't no sense. Or maybe you are not telling, I would say, clear things. For example, I was working as a financial manager from 2017 to 2000, 2018. And this is in InfoJobs. But in LinkedIn, it said from 2017 uh, to 2019. What's that? So at the end, that kind of mistakes can appear as a not detailed person or because you are lying with something. So take care about this small. All, all uh, the information should extremely align in detail with all the CVs that you have. Well, uh, we have two kind of um, search strategies. You can apply on InfoJobs or LinkedIn or whatever to a job, upload your CV, and that's all. Then the recruiter will make the pre-screening with information on this CV, on this job site. But sometimes the recruiters are making uh, the job trying to hunt in candidates. So the recruiters, they will use Boolean search. I don't know if you know what is Boolean search, for sure you know, but you didn't realize. Uh, if I want to uh, find a new flat to rent in Madrid, for example, um, I will start with Google and I will say, okay, flat in Madrid, uh, two bedrooms, whatever. So you will write a sentence and then Google will tell you how many flats in Madrid are available for you in that case with the prerequisites that you have there, you must have. So it's more or less the same but really professional is the Boolean set. As a recruiter we will put the must have on Google or in LinkedIn and then uh, Google will show us 
how many candidates with that must have are available on the market. For example, if I'm a recruiter and I want to find a financial manager, four years experience, French speaker, and with um, a special ERP like SAP, for example, so for example um, I will try to do in Google. SAP, French speaker, Madrid, financial manager, four years experience. If you are a French speaker, but it's not on your CV, you will not appear on my search. So you will lose, I will say, this possibility with the headhunter. And again, it's really important to make your own suit because if you make that exercise perfect, you will realize that the, yeah, that the keywords that you need to have on your CV. Uh, for example, imagine that I'm looking at a designer uh, in retail in Paris, but a luxury brand. Uh, and in my CV, it said, okay, I'm a designer, I'm living in Paris, uh, I'm working in Chanel, which is luxury. But I didn't say luxury brand. I just only said the company, which is perfect. But the recruiter will put luxury, Paris, designer, and your CV will not be there on this shirt. So it also is really important to uh, reflect on your CV, your company, but what kind of sector it is, if it's luxury or not, or whatever, or if it's retail or whatever. I mean, this until, um, artificial intelligence um, is just only a sentence with keywords and for sure um, can appear, I don't know, 1,000 of CVs with that CV uh, word, keywords, okay? And uh, following the Google rule, if you are not on the first page, you are not on Google. So it's really important, and again, make the SWOT to apply to your search strategy and also to your CV. And then you have to try to make your CV with SEO techniques. Uh, the SEO techniques are applying in marketing. So all uh, from the very beginning was in marketing, was in marketing related. And for sure, if you are from marketing, you will know SEO techniques. So it's the same with your CV. So don't think that we are going to see as a recruiter uh, 1,000 of CVs. Trying to understand if your company is looks or not, because we don't have time to do it. So it's better that you can show from the very beginning that your company is matching with the, your position or with the reality of the sector, okay? Oh, well. First of all, I want also to speak about uh, something relevant before starting with the CB. As related with a photo. Well, um, depending on the country and depending on the law, sometimes it's not possible to put a photo uh, because of the law or whatever, but sometimes it's possible. If you will um, add your photo, should be really, really professional. To be honest, uh, day by day, I can see, I don't know <laughs> how many CVs, but um, I realized that the photos are really nice, but not professional. And the photo is not only photo, it's your personal brand. And which is really funny also is uh, sometimes um, the candidates ask me, okay, 
why I have to put my photo. Okay, don't do it. I don't mind. If you don't want to put your photo, it doesn't matter. But they will like do something. For sure you have Facebook, for sure you have Pinterest or Twitter or whatever. So believe me, if I want to see your photos, I will do. So don't worry about the photo. It's useful for the recruiters. If it's forbidden on the country, forget it because it's forbidden. But if it's possible, add a photo. Not because of your face, not because of your um, appearance, because of your personal brand. Imagine that I have a really nice photo with my friends and I'm fantastic, fantastic. So I will uh, cut the photo, I will take out my friends and then I will uh, select this photo to upload on my CV. Big mistake. Maybe I'm pretty, pretty, pretty on this photo, but it's not professional. So try to add on the CV a professional photo. And I will put you an example. Imagine that uh, you want to work in a tattoo uh, shop. This is a stupid example, but just only to have the image on the mind. Okay, keep on mind. You want to work in a tattoo uh, shop. If my photo is like this, or it, the person in chat with this CV, so with this recruitment process, they will not select my CV, maybe because of the image. It's not a photo, it's the image of the personal brand. Because at the end, maybe they need something with tattoos or more active than me or more creative than me so if I'm saying like this this is not the, the the person that I want to have for my company because I'm a tattoo shop again if I'm a financial manager uh, and my photo is I don't know with my family on the mountains or whatever it's really nice uh, you are a sportman, but as a personal brand, you are not so in us that you are a financial manager. Maybe you are a climber, maybe you love the mountains, but again and again, it's not linked with your personal brand. So the photo is not linked with your image, it's totally linked with the personal brand or the profile that you want to show. Okay. Uh, the CVs. For sure, you uh, you did your EAE e CV, which is perfect. To be honest, uh, I really love this uh, this structure because it's simple. It's really useful, and uh, from my point of view, it's not necessarily nothing else. But you have to do it. I will say with a lot, a lot of love, because it's your personal uh, CV. And also, you have to take care about details. Oh, for sure, we have here the logo, then your name and surname, your personal details, speaking about uh, email address, your address, your telephone number, languages, personal information or whatever. And then we have another the other part, the summary. Try to provide them or to provide us uh, information with value. With value, not for you, for the, for the recruiter, for the people in charge with this job position. Uh, you, have to, you have to try to, um, to think about the other one. No, this is not my profile, this is not my CV. It's my CV, yes, because, but it's for someone who is there making the pre-screening. So always, when you are making your CV, you have to think about, okay, is reflecting that I want to say, is showing that I want to show or not? But not with my eyes, with the recruiter's eyes, okay? And also, if you have doubt, don't hesitate to contact us and also we can help you. Um, 
it's really important that this uh, summary makes you different from the rest. And that's really important, and you can do it perfect if you made your SWOT. And again, if you are a Portuguese speaker, write it there, because you are different from the, on the market. You are different uh, comparing with the rest of candidates or comparing with the rest of competitors, because at the end, the rest of uh, candidates are your competitors on this race, OK? Um, training. After the summary or the briefing summary or yeah, we will start with the training. Relevant and current training, I mean. Uh, I was a kid and I had a, don't know, a basketball degree. Okay, that's perfect. But I don't know if you want to continue with your career on basketball, it's perfect, but if it's not, to be honest, it's not relevant. So maybe you can use this space, this, this, yeah, this sheet of paper, to make things better with your CV or to show them more things, but relevant. Um, then we will start with experience and take care. Sometimes the experience is just only three companies. But sometimes the experience are 20. At the end, you have to, I will say, as a general rule, the last three companies and no more. But this is a general rule. If you, for example, uh, your fourth company is really important for this position or for this job or whatever, it just only makes make sense. Use the logic and write the fourth company or your fourth experience. But at the end of the end, uh, you have to take, take uh, yeah, you have to know, you have to think about the recruiter. What kind of things on your profile are different and are important for the people in charge with this recruitment process? Speaking about the duties on the company, because at the end is uh, the date, Name of the company, the job position, and then the mail duties. Also, uh, you can tell something about the company. And this is totally linked with the CEO techniques. For example, if the company is not really well known in Spain because it's a company from Brazil, you can also explain with one uh, sentence the sector or the main figures of this company, or if it's a multinational company or not, or whatever you want to do, but just only if it's necessary. Because if not, for example, if you are working in Google, to be honest, I don't think you need to explain what kind of company is Google. But if you are working in a small company, uh, really local, and the name is not uh, well known, you have to so, what kind of company it is? Uh, the duties, speaking about the duties, you have to try to summarize, I will say in one sentence or one and a half. Explain what the role is. But, Try to do it simple and focus on the target. I mean, for example, uh, a financial manager. For sure, this financial manager uh, has administrative tasks. For sure. But it's not relevant. So it's not necessary to put that kind of, I will say, collateral duties, which are not relevant, and mm, they are not fitting with the job position. At the end, if you are a financial manager, manager and I don't know, you want to work as an administrative, yeah, for sure, you can do it. You can write, I have several or whatever uh, administrative duties. 
But if you want to continue with your career as a financial manager, you don't have to say that kind of collateral uh, duties because you need this space to put on the table the most important duties that you are making. Um, and it's really important on the summary, on the top, and also on the experience, the achievement, the main figures, uh, the results. If it's an international or local scope, this is, the, this is the difference between candidates. I have the same financial uh, manager, but uh, the first one told me that he's a financial manager, five years experience on a big four. That's perfect. But the other one told me, okay, I'm a financial manager in a multinational company. My company is about 1,000 uh, people on uh, LATAM and Europe. Uh, I'm a financial manager, I have my main duties are managing a team about nine people, uh, my achievement, I save 20% um, of the budget last year. So, that kind of details are showing that this financial manager is okay, it's not so bad, but maybe it's better because he's a financial manager and also he's thinking about the figures. And also related with the top, with the summary. Both of them told me I'm an analytical person. Okay, right? But this, this uh, first um, financial manager didn't show me figures. And the second one showed me figures. So who is analytical? The first one or the second one? For sure the second one. And I will repeat, I don't have time enough as a recruiter to call to every single candidate in order to know if they are analytical or not. My impression is that this second um, candidate is more analytical than the first. And I will go directly to this one. And this one, maybe if I have time or maybe, don't know, maybe I can make a call. But I don't think so, to be honest, because at the end we can, the prescreening sometimes is, I don't know, 1,000 of candidates. So do you, do you think that I will call every single candidate in order to know if they are fitting or not with their position? Or if they are telling me that they are analytical and I have to verify these soft skills with a call or with a personal interview or whatever? No, I, I don't have time, we don't have time. So you will lose the opportunity to stay on this position. Uh, which is really important also is the, um, I would say, the last part of the CV related with other experience. International experience, if you have international experience, own projects, if you did, oh, ONGs, collaboration, volunteers, etc., if you did. And don't pull things that they are not, or you didn't on the past, and you are telling them, or you are trying to show that you are making that kind of things, especially with the ONG. I was collaborating with an ONG 10 years ago. I didn't write the, the data, so it seems that I'm still working with this ONG, collaborating with this ONG. But at the end, I will make a call as a recruiter. I will ask you about this ONG, collaboration that you are having, and you will tell me, no, for sure, but uh, I did 10 years ago. So, at the end, it doesn't matter, but the recruiter should think something about, okay, you write this ONG, but just only to stay there. You didn't, you didn't take care about that kind of details, maybe because it's not true, maybe because you are not I would say detail oriented. It's really important also, for example, if you have a long career and um, 
you were in more than five companies, or experience is this box to put other experience related with your, I would say, previous experience as a financial manager. For example, I was working as a financial manager in three companies, three years, two years, five years. Before my experience as a financial manager, I was working as a controller. That's perfect. Maybe you cannot write all this long career on the experience, but in other experience, you can add that, I will say, uh, jobs really important also, but not relevant because we are speaking about the last five, seven years. The CB should be in one page, more or less. Try to do it with all the details. And then maybe your CB with all the details is around two or three pages. So start from the long one and then try to, undo, try to understand which is more important, which is more relevant. So if you make this exercise, you will cut your CB or the pages on your CB, taking just only the more relevant for the present. And before starting the CB, you have to think something about, okay, well, I'm a financial manager. I want to continue as a financial manager? Yes, okay, that's perfect. I will show my experience as a financial manager. But maybe I want to develop my career as a general manager. So, and again, you have to make your own SWOT as a managing director to know if you have the skills, technical skills, uh, related with the managing director position. If you don't have these skills, you have to study or make a master or whatever. You have it, just only so on the CV. Sometimes we are thinking that, come on, I'm a financial manager, I'm a really, 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 really professional, and I want to be managing director. I will send them, I will send to the recruiters, my financial manager CV, which is perfect. And the position is a managing director. And the recruiters are not calling you and you cannot understand why, is because you didn't show them you can have this position as a managing director because you have the skills. You know you have the skills, but you didn't show them. So at the end, they cannot imagine. They will make the press screening based on the CVs on the profiles based on the things that you are telling them, right? And in that case, if you want to, uh, I will say, make an upload in your professional career, it's really important to reflect that kind of things on the summary. I mean, I'm a financial manager, 10 years experience, uh, really prepared to assume another uh, position as a general manager. I want to do it, and then I will show you how I will be perfect for this position because of whatever, okay? And this is really important that you can do it on the summary because at the end, the summary uh, is also, I will say, something to boost your CV or your profile. Um, really important. Soft skills. It's really nice if you said, for example, I'm um, analytical uh, person I'm with analytical skills, or we'll say open mind person, or um, detail oriented, soft skills. No technical skills, more related with your personality or with the soft skills. And you are telling that you are. So then, on the CV or also on the cover letter, you have to show them you are that kind of 
guy, you are telling you are. I mean, if you are, uh, if you are telling that you are really, really, really um, detail-oriented uh, person, the CV should be perfect because if you have uh, mistakes with the grammar or mm, it's, I will say, a mess of the CV, you are telling that you are, but you are showing that you are not. You are, sell, you are showing that you are the opposite. So at the end, they will not, uh, the, the recruiters uh, will not be comfortable with this um, profile because they are telling the soft skills, but they are not showing the soft skills. So take care with the soft skills. To be honest, and day by day, uh, and this is something new, I will say. Uh, not so new, but new. Um, the candidates are writing a lot of things about the soft skills. I will say five paragraphs or more than five paragraphs speaking only about the soft skills. And sometimes to know the experience, the duties, the training that they have, I have to go to second page. It's not bad, it's not so bad. But the main thing here is that, and remember the Google rule, if it's not on the first page, it's not. So don't put on the table 1,000 about the soft skills because, that, because at the end you have to demonstrate your soft skills day by day working. And this is really important. Who can demonstrate your soft skills on the day by day working day? The reference. If you can write something about the, ref the reference, they can make a recommendation about your technical skills, but also about your soft skills. So instead of tell 1,000 things about your soft skills, it's better that you can tell something about your soft skills and then the reference. Who can provide you the information about my profile and my soft skills? My boss, my colleague, a client, someone. The difference, the, the, the big difference here, and also the main stone is, we, we are trying to write things, but we have to change this uh, kind of approach to the recruiters or to the companies, etc. We don't have to tell, we have to show what kind of profiles we have. Um, I will say, imagine um, Picasso, Picasso CB, <laughs> something like artist, creative, whatever. And then Picasso can write the training, Master, experience, blah, 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 blah. At the end, it's better if Picasso can show a picture about the work he was making, okay? So it's the difference between say and show. If you are preparing your CV, again, you can make it longer, then you can cut the CV, and then when it's made, try to know if you are sewing or telling. If you are telling, it's okay. If you are sewing, it's better. In that case, and also on the cover letter, you can sew them. If you were on a, opening a new market, in a special project, uh, I don't know, maybe you were working in innovation department or with blockchains or whatever, you can show them a link to the web or a link to the YouTube with your work or that kind of things. Because at the end, we are not speaking about the CV, as I told you, we are speaking about the profile. And this is why LinkedIn is also good to show your profile. Well, so, as a review, 
the structure of the CB is clear, it's the logo, name is a name, details, photo or not, uh, languages, and the level of languages, the real one. Uh, then we can start with the summary, the training, don't forget the master, um, then the experience, no more than three as a global or as a general rule, and it's better, write the main duties with figures, with the achievements, to demonstrate, to show them what kind of candidate you are and what kind of experience you have. And then other experience related with international experience, own projects, for example, if you are trying with a friend in a startup or something like this, volunteers, ONG, etc. Um, nowadays, we have a big, big, big mistake on the profiles um, who are working on the on a startup. Sure, they are the CEO or the head of finance of the startup, or the head of marketing, or whatever. But um, as a profession, I mean, as um, my job is financial controller. I'm a financial controller. I want to continue my career as a financial controller, but also I have a startup. And on this startup, I'm, of, I'm the head of finance, for example. So, and again, what kind of job do you want to have? Controller or head of finance? If you want to continue your professional career as a controller because you, don't, you are junior, I will say, to, to achieve the financial manager, don't put on the top that you are head of financial department on the startup, whatever. Because you are sewing as a general rule, okay? Don't, uh, don't take this um, so straightforwardness as a general rule, I will say. If you said you are head of finance on the startup, you are sewing that you want to achieve a, fin a head of financial uh, department position. But maybe you are not really prepared because you are a controller, a good controller, but junior for this head of financial uh, department. So take care with the startups and the position. The name of the position sometimes is really, really nice, head of, head of, head of, but at the end can be a little bit confused. And for sure, if I'm a recruiter, if I'm uh, looking for a controller, maybe your CV is perfect for a controller, and you will find a really nice job as a controller, and also you want to be uh, a controller for the moment. Uh, but if you are putting on the top that you are head of finance, I will not call you. Why? Because I will think, come on, this guy doesn't want to be a controller he or she wants to be a financial uh, manager. So that kind of relevant information, because it's relevant if you are working on a startup, so a small company or whatever, and your position in that small company or startups uh, is a big, big war as a head of something, you can uh, add on the others other experience. So my recommendation is focus on your profile Focus on what do you want to do, what kind of uh, job that you want to achieve, and show them how to do it, or how you did. And then the experience is useful for that kind of relevant um, experience, but in that case are not fitting or are not matching with this job position. Um, main mistakes with the CVs. Okay, I told you some examples, but um, in general, the main mistakes are 
really, really, really long CVs. Grammar or spelling mistakes. You cannot, you cannot imagine the, 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 the big amount that I have, uh, the CVs that I have with grammar or spelling mistakes. And it's terrible. Because if you are not taking one minute to review your CV, why, me as a recruiter, I have to spend one minute reading your CV? It's not important for you because you didn't review. Why I have to do it? So take care of that kind of things. No more genius, and this is really important also. Uh, maybe the top is in red, uh, the training is in black, Times New Roman, then you will continue with the Arial in green, then you will continue with um, Calibri or whatever. And then, which is worse, you will say, I'm really, really, really detailed person. No, I don't think so. So, is your experience uh, not enough for the position? No, it is, it's good. But on the CB, you are showing me that you are not the right person because you didn't have time or you didn't spend the time to prepare your CB. So if you are not going to prepare your CB, which is really important, I'm not very sure if you will have the time to make up, for example, the p &L review, speaking about financial, or if you are going to stay with your team, speaking about with every single guy on your team, because with the, so, with the profile, with the CB, you are showing me that you are not taking time to do the things perfect. Sorry. But this is that you are showing me with your profile. Nothing else. And now, and um, years ago, to be honest, uh, we didn't have that kind of problem. Okay, but day by day, by day is worse and hard to understand. Uh, years ago was, I would say, simple. Financial manager, human resources manager, or a secretary, receptionist, controller. But the other day is worse for the recruiters because instead of, say, human resources manager, we can find CBs with happiness and engagement strategy manager. What's that? So maybe your, the name of your position and your company is a happiness manager. For sure, that's great. But speaking about the SEO techniques, I will, I will put human resources manager. I will not say happiness manager or happy manager. No. So if your position, I will say, is not normal, try to make with a slash, for example, happiness manager, slash human resources manager, slash ABP, or whatever. Something easy to understand. Uh, and not also for the recruiters, also for the hiring manager, because at the end of the process, the recruitment process, we have several actors. The first one is the recruiter. The second one, maybe, is the hiring manager. Um, don't know, speaking about IT, for example, uh, if you are an IT guy and your CV is totally oriented to the IT things, which is perfect, maybe the recruiter, is he, if it's not an IT recruiter, cannot understand really well uh, your, your, the name of your position or what kind of things are you doing for the company. And in that case, it's also really important to use the SEO techniques. So if you are DevOps, working with Amazon platform, don't think that, okay, I'm DevOps. I don't have to tell nothing else. I'm DevOps. Well, but if the recruiter are using the SEO techniques, maybe you are not on this search. And also, maybe because you didn't, you didn't explain 
your mainly duties, one line, one line, one sentence or one uh, sentence and a half, they cannot see if your position is fitting with the position in this company. Mean? So take care with the name of the position. Please, if your name, if the name of the position is really, really strange, try to try to make um, a synonymous or something which uh, can fit with the company. Okay? And this is totally new because, to be honest, uh, the companies are, I will say, uh, putting really nice um, job names. And sometimes it's difficult to understand if you are a controller, a reporting, or a financial manager. Okay. Um, sometimes on the CVs we have, I would say, um, a cap. For example, I was working in a company from 2012 to 2015 and then for every reason uh, I was one year out of the market I will say because of any reason doesn't matter so the next experience is in 2016 to whatever when you are looking for a job um, the candidate is always trying to put something in the middle of the, this gap. So take care, mind the gap, but with sense. And if it's nothing to say, it's better to say nothing and leave uh, the gap like this. And then you can explain the situation on the briefing, or maybe you can speak the situation on the cover letter, or whatever. Or maybe you can give them the reference for this period of your professional career, but please don't put things like, for example, uh, yeah, that gap. One year studying English. Great. You can do it, and you have to do the training part. And also, it's not one year studying English, it's one year in, I don't know, London or Malta or United States, studying English with the level whatever, C1 or B2, on the school, la la la. So you have to give more details because of the end. If you're trying to put just only one sentence to mind the gap, the results, um, will not be really good because the recruiter will think that oh come on do you want to put something there because you have something to put out of the table and for sure if they call you for sure for sure for sure they will ask you for their gap so you have to be really prepared and you, do, you cannot lie you have to tell the reason and also if it's better if you can give them reference on this period. It's always the, the best from my point of view. Okay. Um, what's up? What's new? To be honest, as I told you also, the CBS concept is being replaced by the professional profile. For sure, the CV offline is no longer used. I mean, I don't know if you remember, for sure not, but I remember, I don't know how many, amount of CVs on paper, uh, no on PDF, no on Word, no on the computer. It's only seats and seats and seats of paper. Forget it. It's totally out. Uh, but the main thing here is uh, that the CV online will be complementary. The CV online, PDF or LinkedIn or whatever, it's okay, but 
is coming and I told you the profile. And the profile is more than the CV. In that case, we have several examples. For example, uh, you can add your video CV. Uh, you can prepare the video CV with your mobile phone or whatever. To be honest, this is for another training because how to prepare the video CV as a professional is really difficult. So don't do it if you cannot do it. It's better not do it. And also you can um, go to YouTube. You can write video CV and you will uh, have the really nice examples. Some, sometimes are funny. Uh, and it's an example, um, I will say, the worst example. Uh, to, to have a video CV. And what's very important is that uh, the CV uh, will be with specialized, uh, specialized uh, pages. Like, for example, GitHub. So if you are an IT guy, you can have your CV, your LinkedIn profile, blah, 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 blah. and also you should stay on GitHub, for example, I will say GitHub, but I, have, I can say Stack Overflow or uh, these uh, websites are platforms just only for designer or IT guys. And on that platform, they can show with images or with examples to be honest, really interactive and really nice, and they can show the work. Uh, for example, in Pinterest, you can also show your work if uh, you are a retail uh, designer. So you can show your work there. So at the end, you can reflect on your CP, the pages, or the platforms, the new platforms, uh, linked with your profile. Unfortunately, if you are a financial manager, maybe you cannot show your work because Sometimes it's forbidden because of, uh, because of the company and because it's really confidential. But uh, apart of this kind of uh, profiles, all of us can show something more touchable, I will say, on this special um, website to demonstrate the work that we are doing. And again, uh, Picasso can... Okay right now no but maybe uh, Picasso was able to show uh, that kind of excellent work in Pinterest so if the uh, Picasso CB is uh, linked and related with the, uh, the, the work that he has on Pinterest it's better to show the work so what's up CV online, the profile, not the CV, the profile, the personal brand, which is really, really important. And what's next, but it's right now, uh, is the video CV. And I will also recommend you to enter in YouTube uh, to know how it works and examples, really nice examples, and sometimes not so nice, but anyway, useful uh, for you to understand what's next. So, um, I think that's all for today. To be honest, it was a fast training, speaking about the cover letter, the CVs, and the personal brand. Um, because, um, as you know and, and also know, EIA is really prepared to help you with the SWOT, with the strategy, to prepare the target list, and also with that kind of things. But this is, um, I will say, uh, I want to show you um, how the things are changing, uh, the importance that the CV has, and also uh, it's really important that you have to think about the old profile. Unfortunately, uh, your profile is not just, just only your CV, because if I want to know more about you as a candidate, remember, I can go to Facebook, to Twitter, to Pinterest, or whatever. So take care, and again, details, details, details. 
focus on something, focus on the target, on the position that you want to stay, on the company that you want to stay, and try to make every single thing for them. The cover letter, the CV, the profile, the reference, whatever. So thank you very much. Uh, if you have any doubt, don't hesitate to contact us. And we will be great if we can continue with questions or whatever. If you have, uh, just only send us by email. And also we can prepare something for you if you need something, okay? So again, thank you. And prepare your suit. And that's all.